Okay, now that we've sorted our ins and outs of our scene, we've got our backdrop for our scene as set by our off-world live camera, and we're passing it through composure and out to an output. We can add a new element into this. You might notice I deleted that original CG element that's not in my hierarchy anymore. That was literally just an example for the first video. That doesn't actually have any function in this example. So we'll crack on without that CG element. The key concept I want to cover here is that the way Composure layers the elements together is quite different to using After Effects or something like that. You might layer up your elements and expect them to show up one over the other. The way Composure does this is through transform passes. This transform pass is a fancy name for basically collaging all your elements together. So say you are sticking, sticking your background down, sticking your foreground element on top of that and sticking your CG layers on top of that and masking them off, cutting them out against each other. That's all happening within the transform pass section. So this is a key section of composure. Transform pass is where all the magic happens. And the cool thing about this is it's essentially a material. It's just a material that's set, set to post-processing domain. So you can get real technical, real interesting with this. And this is why people have made things like Composure X, where they've made their own custom materials that are all Awesome for compositing, make your life easier, uh, and that's all just custom stuff done in Unreal's Material Editor. So it's still in Material Editor, but we're just using Material Editor to make these transform passes, which is what we're layering our footage up with. So let's hop back into our Composure panel and go through this. So let's add a layer element. I'm going to add a media plate and I'm going to call it foreground one just for quickness. And this now needs something to come in. So uh, what I'm going to do is in OBS, just get this. I don't have any good green screen footage myself. So I've got this happy chappy that I'm going to send in. Again, check previous tutorials on sending Spout into Unreal using the Offworld Live Toolkit. But that's what I'm going to do to get the live feed of the DJ in here. And sweet, once that's in here as a render target, we can now add this to our media plate. So down here, we can make this a texture input. In the inputs, we can set our media source to be a texture input. And this guy can straight away be that texture input. So let's add another layer onto this. Cool, let's grab a compositing element. This is just going to be DG element one. Uh, this is again going to be the off-world live render target. DJ camera angle, your DJ name. Okay, so now that we've got this in here and we've got a background element set and you can test this out by toggling the opacity and oh, what have we got here? This just says disabled. Now, why is that? This is all working fine. This is because we need to take a look at the transform pass section. This is where basically all the magic happens. So we've got our input. It's going to be passed through the transform pass and it's going to become an output. So think of this as effects. These effects can come in the way of uh, alpha masks, they can be color grading, they can be whole layer elements. And this gives you a few to start off with. You can look at chroma key, D spill, and these are kind of these have some parameters for you to play with, but we want to use the compositing element material pass for this main one. The interesting thing about these is based on materials. So if we create a new material here to go in this slot, call this DJ and composite. This material here is going to be the place where all of our layers are added together. And this is a little bit more complicated than other kind of layered systems like After Effects and things. You'd think, oh, my layers are here. Why aren't they just showing up? But what it does, it enables you to get a bit more technical, do some more interesting things with it once you understand it. So what we want to do, we want to get all of these into this material. And this material is going to, going to be the place where all of our composite elements come together. So what we want to do, we can create, we can create Create a texture parameter, param texture sample parameter 2D. And what we need to do is reference it by name. These all reference by name. So as long as your spelling is the same, that is going to know that we're talking about this layer. So that's great. You can copy and paste that one and press F2 to rename this one BG underscore element one. And spelling is much needed. I don't think caps matter, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, and 
what we want to make sure we do is change this material to a post process material that's very important for compositing this material domain means that's going to work now so so now awesome thing we can look at here is if we go composure we've got all these options for how to layer things over each other we can also use all of the other all of the other elements that are free for us to use in the material editor so this time what we're going to use is this over this means we want this element over this element. We're going to use the RGBA node because we're working with RGB and alpha. If RGB is a mixture of three values to create a color, then RGBA is like the fourth dimension for colors. They're like, oh my God, I can now see alpha. I can now be layered on top of another color. Fourth dimension, breaking boundaries. So hooking up all these RGBAs, we've now told our layers that this one wants to be on top of this one. And now in our main DJ and comp here, we've got our input pass, our transform pass, which will be where we layer our layers on top of each other. And they're shown down here as well. And then that's going to be set as an output. So now when we go in our DJ and comp and we turn this opacity down, we've got the other layer behind us. That is amazing. That's super awesome. We can sort of test the, the real time element of this just quickly by piloting this camera and moving it around. We've now got a composite going on in real time. So that's really, really cool. Got that set up really quickly, testing it with this opacity. You can just flick this layer on and off. You might be keen to get green screening this guy out, but what we're actually going to do is look at getting a 3D element in front of this because it's just a nice next thing to learn. So next video, we'll go into that.